Hello, I've got a little demonstration here that's going to illustrate radioactive decay. In a radioactive substance we have lots and lots of radioactive atoms which are all unstable and as they decay they give off radiation. And so because they're decaying all the time the number of atoms that are left is reducing all the time and that little demonstration is supposed to illustrate that. In a real radioactive substance we have many many trillions of uh, atoms, so many that you can't count them, but we know that in any given time a certain fraction of them will decay. To illustrate that, I've got some dyes. I'm afraid I've only got trillions of atoms here, but just a hundred dyes. Um, but it will illustrate the principle. And because uh, it's a random process, like with our dice, when we throw them, the number of sixes that we get is quite random. And I'm going to say that when a dice um, representing an atom rolls a six, that represents a radioactive decay, and so it will decay. And we'll see how many we get each time. So first of all, if I throw these dice uh, randomly into that tray there, we can then see how many sixes we've got. Let me count them. Uh, one, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Any more? Fourteen. Oh, and there's another one. Fifteen. I don't think there are any more. So that's fifteen this time. Because I've got a hundred dice here, we'd expect about one-sixth of them each time. So we're expecting somewhere around about sixteen. So fifteen is quite a reasonable number to get for the first throw. So we've lost 15 dice, um, so after the first throw we are left with 85 dice left. So these 15, let's take out of circulation. Those are decayed, so they're not going to decay again. Um, but we can go through another iteration of the radioactivity and see how many uh, we get left after our dies decay again. We've now got 85. Let's see how many of those came up with sixes. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, any more? Nine, I think that's it, nine. Slightly fewer than before because we've got fewer dice this time. So if we take nine out now, uh, that leaves us 76 dice left. So we'll take those nine out of circulation and throw again. See how many we've got this time. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Any more? Thirteen. Uh, oh, there's one there. Fourteen. I think that's it, 14 this time. Um, you might say, well, hang on, that's more than last time, but remember this is varying randomly, so 14 is not an unreasonable uh, number to get for one-sixth of the dice that we had there. So let's record another 14 missing, which means now we've got 62 dice left. So we'll take these 14 out of circulation. And we'll throw again. Nearly 
last one there. And how many sixes are there? There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I think that's it, twelve. So that takes us down to 50 dice, just half of them remaining after four throws. So we take those out of circulation and throw again. This time we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven dice this time. So if we take those out, we've got thirty nine left. Put those away. And how many have we got this time? One, two, three, four. Oh, there's one more. Five. That's five more dice gone, which leaves us 34 left. Five, six, seven, and that's it. Seven this time. Seven dice so taken away that time, which leaves us twenty-seven. And uh, let's see if we do it one more time. There's a one, two, just two sixes this time. So that leaves us with 25 left. Uh, we've gone down to a quarter of the original number. I think that's a suitable place to stop and see how we can summarise what we've got. Well, we're now in a position to plot our results as a graph. So I've got here a, a graph showing the number of dice left, which in our analogy represents the number of radioactive atoms remaining, and on the horizontal axis, the throw, which in our analogy represents the time elapsed. So we started off with 100 dice, so I'll plot that there on the graph. After one throw that had come down to 85, which is there. After two throws it had come down to 76. After three throws it was 62. Then it was 50. 39. 34. 27 and finally 25. So we see that the number of dice remaining representing the amount of radioactivity reduces over time uh, and it falls quite steeply at first in a curve which gradually flattens off with time. And that's characteristic of what we call an exponential curve and it's the sort of result you expect where you take out a fraction of the dice or a fraction of the atoms decay every time. So we can characterize that by the time it takes for half of the dice to be removed or half of the activity to decay. So we started with 100, half of that is 50, and we see we get down to 50 
after four throws. So we call that the half time of this particular decay. We can see again that it halves again from 50 down to 25 um, after another four throws. So after eight throws it's gone down to a quarter of what it was. And again that's a characteristic of this exponential decay. Now drawing a curve through those points um, is not nearly as easy as drawing a straight line. And one of the nice things about an exponential curve is we can turn it into a straight line by plotting on a logarithmic scale. So I've got here another graph where the vertical scale has got the numbers squashed to represent the logarithm of the numbers. So it's a squashed scale which will turn this into a straight line hopefully. So we start off with 100 and now it goes down to 85 which on this squash scale is up there somewhere. Then 76. Then 62. Uh, 50. 39, 34, 27, and 25. So we see here on this logarithmic scale, uh, it looks much more like a straight line. And it's easy to draw a straight line through these points with a ruler. And once again, we can measure the half time of that goes down from 100 to 50 in four throws and from uh, 50 down to 25 in another four throws making a total of eight throws to go down to a quarter of the original activity. So whether we plot it as a straight line on a logarithmic scale or as an exponential curve on a linear scale that is characteristic of the sort of decay that we get with radioactive atoms where a fraction of them disappear in every unit of time. So what I hope I've done there is to illustrate radioactive decay by showing that if we take some dice and throw them and take out all the sixes, we take out a constant fraction every time, the number of dice remaining falls not as a straight line but as an exponential curve. And exactly the same thing happens with radioactive atoms. If a certain fraction of the atoms decay every time, then the number of atoms remaining, the radioactivity remaining, falls not linearly but exponentially with time. And we can characterize that sort of exponential decay by the half time, the time it takes for half of the activity to disappear. So that's a nice little illustration of radioactive decay using the analogy of dice.